Hello and welcome to the EV Show. My name is Mark Brems and today we're going to drool over a 21 window 1967 Sea Blue VW bus. It's a beauty, so let's take a look. So let's take a look around back because that's definitely where the business end of this vehicle is. The first thing you're going to see here is what we call the six pack. The reason it's a six pack is because there are six Tesla modules in here. These are modules that have been harvested from a Model S, a Tesla Model S. Also have a BMS main unit, which is a battery management system main unit and a satellite unit to handle charge management for all of these cells inside here. On the side of the box is a removable panel which allows access to the BMS units and also to the relays which are there for BMS warnings and also for uh, charger cutoff. And you also have a Molex connector right here which is for signal and for powering the BMS as well as a USB pass-through so you can connect a laptop to the BMS and talk to it. So let's talk a little bit about the Hyper 9 high voltage motor and the SME controller. So this is the high voltage version of the NetGain Hyper 9 motor, which handles battery packs from 150 to 175 volts, which is either six or seven Tesla modules. So this configuration here is 150 volts. So here we see the SME ACX144, that's a mouthful, but that is the high voltage controller that drives this motor right here. Usually, we mount the controller and the chill plate underneath it directly onto the adapter above the motor. That's the way EV West normally does this, but in this case, the box is taking up all that room. So our solution is to mount the controller right on the rear face of the box, which makes for a very short cable throw to the motor and makes it easy to access the serial programming port right here. This is where you connect the laptop and set up the controller. You might notice that there's some slack in the cabling here, but that allows for relative movement between the motor and the controller and eliminates any stress on the cable terminals. As you can see, under the controller, there is a chill plate. This is an aluminum billet chill plate right here. The chill plate, the purpose of that is to keep the controller cool. There's a lot of current passing through here and this is pushing a lot of that into the motor. It generates heat. So the chill plate has liquid coolant circulating through it and these hoses right here, you can see those lines go down under this panel. You can see right here there are fans. As you can see, under the panel we were just looking at, there's a radiator with fans directly above it and here is the pump and the reservoir. You can see the coolant lines right here. Over here on the left side of the motor bay, you can see the contactor box. This is where all the high current is fed to the motor and the controller. The contactor box also contains the shunt to measure current and the high voltage contactors for both the DC converter and the heater. And it also contains the high voltage fuses and the key switch relay. And on the other side of the motor bay, tucked up underneath the cargo deck, you can see the DC-DC converter and the Elcon charger. So in the front, you can see the DC to DC converter, which takes full pack voltage and drops it down to 12 volts to power all of the original accessories in the car and also keep the 12 volt battery charged. 
In front of that, you can see the Elcon charger, which is rated at 3.3 kilowatts. So if you do the math for a 32 kilowatt pack, we can expect about nine to 10 hours to charge the batteries from an absolute zero state to a full charge. So that's about it for the motor bay. Let's close this up. If you come over to the side, you can see the level two charging port, which occupies the same space as the original gas filler cap. So we had to fab up a tilt flange to reposition the charging receptacle to provide the, the correct angle for the J1772 plug to seat properly. Good as gold. So one thing people always want to know is what is the weight difference between the original stock vehicle and the electric conversion? And I'll break it down for you. So a stock Volkswagen engine is about 250 pounds. A uh, 10 gallon gas tank at six pounds per gallon, that's about 60 pounds. So you're at about 310 pounds for the gas car. On the other hand, the net gain Hyper 9 motor is 120 pounds. The chill plate and controller that I showed you earlier, that's another 15 pounds. Uh, 55 pounds per Tesla module and an extra 20 for the box, you're at about 540 pounds. So the difference is about 230 additional pounds for the EV conversion which is about the size of a normal male adult, an American adult, which would fit neatly in this back seat right here. So the advantage of the six pack battery box is that nearly a third of all that battery weight is pushed forward over the axle. Whereas most of the original stock gas engine weight was a good 12 inches behind the axle. That puts a third of the battery weight ahead of the axle right over it. So the advantage of that forward weight distribution is better handling characteristics, better performance, better cornering. So that's pretty much a tour of the outside. Let's take a look inside. So as you can see, this vehicle is in great condition with attention paid to all the interior details by the vehicle restorer. And for all intents, the vehicle looks as original as the day it left the showroom floor. This transaxle has been rebuilt and has been reworked as a two-speed, which better suits the power curve of the electric motor, as well as a conversion from swing axle to IRS independent rear suspension and CV axles. So you have low and high, and you can clutch and shift as you normally would with the gas engine. We also included a performance clutch and pressure plate to better handle the torque of the electric motor. Uh, at the dash, we fabricated a vintage looking panel for the extra controls that are added for the electric conversion. As you can see, we have these temporarily labeled. We will probably engrave or emboss these. Uh, here is the regen switch. Regenerative braking is normally enabled with the knob pushed in for regular driving and disabled with the knob pulled out just in case the driver wants to coast. To the right is the reverse switch. Since the reverse gear has been removed from the transaxle, we rely on the motor to reverse the direction of the vehicle. Put it in gear, pull the switch, and when the motor goes backward, the car goes backwards. And then to the right, we have the heater knob. And since there is no longer a gas engine to generate heat for the cabin, we use an electric heater, which is located underneath and in the rear of the vehicle. So that's it for the walkthrough. Uh, let's take this little beastie for a spin. So here you have every pleasant aspect of the original VW bus driving experience, but without the noise, without the smell, without the heat, and you've literally doubled your horsepower. The original stock engine was 65 horsepower and the net gain Hyper 9 delivers 120 horsepower. You have ample power to take any hill without stressing about holding up all the traffic behind you. It's quiet and pleasant. You can actually have a conversation with your passengers without having to scream over the engine noise and without the constant worry about your VW gas engine wearing out and breaking down. At EV West, we really cherish the design legacy of these classic vehicles and understand the importance of keeping them as close to the original as possible. We've just given them a cleaner, more efficient, and more powerful mode of propulsion.
If the future is electric, then this is a perfectly reasonable and logical way to keep these beloved classic cars on the road so we can enjoy them long after petroleum fuels have gone the way of the dinosaurs. Thanks for watching.